my name's Karen Fire and welcome back to the Isle of Sipta. Today I'm going to be teaching you some awesome starter tips for this map since it's come to full release now and I'm going to show you how to start off and get like a quick footholding. I'm going to show you what this map is kind of about and uh, without much spoilers also so you can also enjoy the experience for the first time. This will just help give you a little boost. Upon creating your character, you're gonna realize there's several spawn points to go to. You got the Northwest, the Southwest. It doesn't matter too much where you start because all areas seem to have the same kind of location. So you'll end up in a place with shipwrecks and always in the free starter zones, you got these uh, water skins that you could come and find. Also, um, they'll be in the direct line if you start running towards the land, you should be able to find them. So I'll show you quickly where to find all of those water skins, just in case you do miss them. Another great tip about starting out on the beaches is there's absolutely plenty of stuff. You've got branches everywhere, you've got rocks everywhere. You've also got, you know, wood as well on the floor as well that you can also obtain. And you can actually drink the water here despite it being by the salty sea. And not only that, the beach is also a great place to pick up some spare food, so you can get oysters on the first day you can eat it can give you food poisoning do be careful of that but if you were to cook it up then um you could get some nice food to start you off now pretty much all the spawn locations will be near a camp so if you do want to kind of start off quick uh, grab yourself some daggers or whatever you prefer using out of that kind of arsenal and then take it to your local camp there's a few exiled lands kind of camps around you should generally find them pretty close to the spawn point either way on either side for this one right here you can see in my mini map um i do have one right here just above one of my spawn points that i can go to and i can go and rob these poor exiled stuff that's going to help me have a great boost and as you can see there are any exiles but lots of useful stuff here either way you know you can get some good items in their chests and get some maybe starter thralls from these camps will be very useful to you my next tip will be going to get yourself some easy kind of aloe you know usually with how this works is you're spawn around the map and you kind of want to go to a river inlet now all throughout the redwoods these river inlets do have quite a lot of aloe in them and it's also the same for the other side of the map if you've chosen to go there if you go throughout that inlet then that also has a bunch of aloe so that can get you started off quite nicely with aloe potions if the rough wraps aren't for you however you can start off with rough wraps if you don't want to leave the beaches and that only costs a little bit of fiber i don't really recommend one side over from the other both are very good especially when you're living near the kind of streams where you can get all of that aloe um, each side is great in their own ways especially you know in this little part definitely don't go in this big part right here as there is two of these kind of locations on Sipta that both have very scary stuff in them and quite large camps so this one being one of them and the other one being one of the other larger ones is New Luxa which is over here those kind of camps including the lay shrines as well that you get in the middle so all of those kind of triangular looking buildings you're seeing towards the middle including the middle itself is all kind of later game stuff so don't worry about those kind of areas just yet now at the top of the map is our only friendly npc camp in the heart-shaped island the camp of castaways it is called this place is the only place where the npcs won't attack you on this map all other camps will attack you when they see you on site so essentially it's kind of like your set city on the exiled lands map However, it is much less lucrative in the means of chests here that you can loot. However, there are plenty of vendors here to talk to. They will sell you various different things that you can buy for a few pennies, including the ones that will sell you eggs, such as the rock nose egg vendor, the shoe bill, the spider, you know, all of that stuff is here also. But there is one very important person here that's going to help you with your alchemic base harvesting and stuff like that that's always worth it especially if you're on a server that uses uh, economy or currency this lady is the gal you definitely want to talk to well, her name yeah. is Valeria Look what the tide washed up. and she will give you 25 gold per scout report scout reports can be found in a number of places they tend to be in a lot of the new camps as well 
But they'll look kind of like this. It'll look like a dead man or a lady just strewn across. There's only a few player models, so they're quite easy to recognize. And you'll be able to interact with them. You interact, it'll give you that scout report, and you can go and trade in for those coins with the Valeria right up the top of the map. This means if you want the gold dust to be able to make the alchemy base, it does make things a lot easier. There's also a lot of gold and silver nodes on the map. However, this is one of the most efficient ways to get those gold coins uh, via these. So if you're on a kind of server that is RP or anything like that, then getting those gold coins is going to be very nice. Although beware to server owners, it can break the economy quite a lot by being able to harvest these quite efficiently and easily. If you're looking to grind for XP, remember you can always use your journey steps. This will always help you get some simple XP. These little newbie river areas can be great to start off in. Uh, like I was saying about the aloe, you can go ahead and collect that. And of course, on the go, you can make these weak aloe extracts. Now these will be nice because you'll be crafting them a bunch and that's XP already going into your character just by making those as you go along. And there's a lot of weak kind of creatures around here too, so you can use those to level on as well. Just a lot of great stuff. Even in the kind of Redwoods, Newbie River areas, you can find things like Aardwolves to level off of, Crocodiles, tons and tons of Aloe. I definitely recommend you start off on these areas because they are going to give you a great boost in experience. Now once you've reached about level 25 to 30, you can start looking at Elder Vaults. Now they do recommend they're now level 60, however, I figured out it's pretty much the same as last time with the leveling scales of how hard things hit. However, the only thing that's changed really that makes it level 60 is the loot that you get at the end. There is two kind of altars you can click on that will give you like their special arsenal or armory and stuff like that. That's what makes it level 60. They still hit as hard as they did in early access. So um, that will be absolutely fine. So a couple of good starting ones is of course going to be the goblin ones. Both of them actually are very good for, you know, getting some really good stuff early on. You can take a simple T3 fighter for all here. Uh, make sure you give them some decent armor and that will definitely help you throughout this dungeon. Or maybe if you can get your hands on a playful puppy, that will also give you a great boost. But right here is one goblinoid kind of out of vault that you can go into at that kind of leveling. Or you can go up to the one up here, which you see right here with my mouse button. There's one right here and you can go in there and get an easy out of vault out the way. Of course, if you bring more people, it's going to make it much easier than just being on your own. But if you're on your own, then I do recommend take a thrall with you or a very good pet. Now, speaking of playful pups, they're actually very useful. Actually, some people use them in in-game. They pretty much, once you convert them into a thing you can use, is they will always turn into a greater dog, which makes for a fabulous pet to have. They are very, very strong. Now, you can find them all over the map in the thrall camps. But one of the most consistent places that I've always found one is going to be in the Ashen Core camp. Now this place is uh, very dangerous, absolutely dangerous. But if you can stick through it, if you can just run through it and be very careful, you can get this pup with ease. So we're going to go in from this kind of entrance way just below the ship. We want to be absolutely careful for these kind of traps. You can see loads of bear traps. But what we're going to do is stick to the right wall. And that's going to take us to the place that we want to be. Be careful with the bear traps once you get to the entrance. And you can just drop down. Now be careful because the frills can drop now, down holes now since one of the last updates. There's one there that you want to ignore. You want to go to the right hand side. Be careful with the poison bombs on the side of the walls and there. And there is our playful pup. He's just in this prison all alone. What a sad little guy. You can see we've got a nice playful pup now that we can have... And we can now get one of the special puppies out of this. And with this, you can get a selection of the seven goodest boys to choose from, which will be great in stats. So we have all of this lot. We have Sigrid, Tor, Apollo, Ares, Brutus, Oscar, and Koji. And they're all going to be very good to have, especially in the beginning. As you can see, their health is pretty damn good. With them being greater, they're also going to hit very hard. And they're going to be just the greatest little puppers to get. 
Now, locations like I'm in right now are no joke. However, they can be very handy for getting things like chests. It can get quite cold here. Uh, the mobs here are pretty mean. But if you can outsmart and outrun them, then it can also be very good. Such as this place. Now, as you can see, I'm very cold here. Well, just cold right now. It's the middle of the day, so probably one of the best times to come. But this place is super good for just random chests, you know? So right here, you can see nothing's really going to get in the way. Those puppies might do, but then I can just vault back up on the wall and I will be perfectly safe and fine. Actually, you can just generally sit on the wall and access these chests via this kind of method anyway. Well, there is tons and tons of chests all over these kind of areas. And it's definitely a great place to get some early on chests if that's kind of what you want to play it like. Another thing I'm also going to recommend to you if you're new to the Isle of Scepter and you really don't know where things are quite and you want a little bit of a helping hand, then this interactive map is absolutely fantastic. The URL is right above there so you can type that in and come to this map. Big ups to them, big shout out to the people who made this map. But this map is great. You can select things that you need. You can find all sorts of things. Like you, It will mark chests for you. So like I was saying with an earlier tip. In this kind of area over here. An extra lot. If you want to find stuff like chests. Then it will point them out. You can go and get them. Emotes it's also going to point out. And a bunch of other things. Like recipes you might want as well. World bosses. All of that good stuff. And even for all camps that you can go to. As well for certain things you need. This map is absolutely fantastic for all sorts of things that you're going to need. And I definitely do recommend you have a look at it. My next tip is about finding things for perhaps later to mid game. Now, if you're looking for brimstone, black ice, useful things like that, gold and silver, these all tend to congregate around several different areas. Being the Lay Shrines and the Elder Vaults. Now, the Elder Vaults are, of course, going to be a lot more dangerous because they have guards by them the middle might be a little bit more dangerous if you're on a pvp server however they can have very nice things by them for instance this lay shrine right here that i'm at right now if you wanted to farm some brimstone as you can see there's already quite a few nodes here they can come and collect these big yellow nodes they are very good for a selection of things so as you can see outside one of these vaults we have lots of black ice we have some gold nodes right here as well, metal nodes, brimstone, and also lotus flowers are always kind of by the outer vaults also. So that's another place you'll be looking for good things such as this. Now the Isle of Scepter is an absolutely humongous map, so you actually might want to get a horse companion as soon as possible. This means you actually do need to come to the middle areas of the map uh, when there's not a storm going on because the storm will spawn things on top of you that will absolutely shred you as a starter. So make sure there's not a storm going on. It'll be pretty obvious when one's going on because you'll have a big swirling storm in the middle of the map and there'll be lots of lightning and all of that stuff. But we want to go ahead once that's cleared up and go and find a foal. Now there are a few very good locations for this and it does tend to be on the east and western sides of the middle. So you can see right now in between these two little cubes actually, you can see there's got like kind of borders here and there. You can find quite a bit of foals around here. And if you were to go to the other side, it's also very good for foals in these two kind of cubes right here. And uh, you can go get your horses right there. If horses aren't your cup of tea, there's also rhino babies that spawn in both of these areas as well actually. You can check those out for rhinos. Camps are great for all sorts of things of course. But one of the things they're greatest for at the moment is the frog cages. This means you can pretty much get a free partner for yourself, which can level up from a T1 all the way to a named fighter, archer, or bearer. This being a good location for just a cage. Some camps will have a jailer and a cage with a frog in it. Some only have one or the other. To obtain these, of course, you have to beat the camp that is protecting the cages. Kill the Jailer to be able to get the key and then get your very best friend. So we get rid of that Jailer, we are steal his key and then we get our best friend out of here. And sometimes it can be a bit finicky, you might need to go to different angles of the cage to be able to get one out. As you see we got a bad one this time round and he's probably, yeah he's about to die. 
But if you do get a bad one, I highly recommend don't just leave them alive and hanging around. Break their bonds so that you won't have that trouble. But that's pretty much how the mechanic works. If you want some free frills, then this can be a great way to obtain some, especially via small camps such as this one. But anyways, I hope this video helped you out get a head start on Sipta. If you're looking for more guides in the Isle of Sipta on Conan Exiles, I do have plenty in the playlist down below in the description. I also have linked some more helpful videos regarding resources and other things that you might find useful. Definitely do check them out. And I hope you have a wonderful time on the Isle of Sipta. Thank you for watching. I love you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Yeah.